Hi. Seems as if everyone is perfectly happy. Monsters have returned to the surface. Peace and prosperity will rule across the land. Take a deep breath. There's nothing left to worry about. Well, there is one thing. One last threat. One being with the power to erase everything. Everything everyone's worked so hard for. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? That's right. I'm talking about you. You still have the power to reset everything. Toriel, Sans, Asgore, Alphys, Papyrus, Undyne. If you so choose, everyone will be ripped from this timeline and sent back before all of this ever happened. Nobody will remember anything. You'll be able to do whatever you want. That power. I know that power. That's the power you were fighting to stop, wasn't it? The power that I wanted to use. But now, the idea of resetting everything? I... I don't think I could do it all again. Not after that. So please... Just let them go. Let Frisk be happy. Let Frisk live their life. But, if I can't change your mind, if you do end up erasing everything, you have to erase my memories too. I'm sorry. You've probably heard this a hundred times already, haven't you? Well, that's all. See you later, human. Oh boy. I'm gonna regret this, aren't I? Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Undertale, the LP that just never seems to die. Until today, and there's more meaning to that than meets the eye, I'm sure, but yes, we are here to do the final run of Undertale, the genocide run. The one where you kill everybody. Now, I didn't know anything about Undertale going into it except like the obvious things that uh, people know about the game just from hearing about it when you ask people what's Undertale about then they tell you it's about a game It's a game where you don't have to kill anyone However, the opposite is also true. You could if you want to kill literally everybody and For whatever reason the genocide route is recommended to do last It's actually also recommended that you don't do a pacifist run first like the neutral run which I wound up doing by accident was actually a good thing for me in the end because uh, by the way, just in case you are watching this first for whatever reason, I'm going to be spoiling stuff from the neutral and pacifist route, so you better be watching this last or playing the game for yourself, otherwise you're going to be spoiled on stuff. So, basically, um, it's recommended that you do a neutral route first, so then you could go ahead and do the pacifist run. I think what I read is that you can't do a pacifist run until you do a neutral run. I was trying very hard not to look up too much information because I didn't want to get spoiled on anything. But I was, that's why I was led to believe from what I read is that you can't do a pacifist run. So maybe something different would have happened if I had gotten to the final boss and I hadn't killed anyone up to that point. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, after you do the true pacifist run and you get through the game without killing every anybody, world peace happens, the monsters come back on above ground and they live in harmony with humans and everyone loves you, everyone's your friend and it seems like a perfect ending. But right from that little bit with Flowey, right when you turn the game back on, he says that we could reset the game if we want to, but even he didn't exactly seem to want me to do it. So I'm curious as to how this is going to go. 
My, I'm gonna give you my theory right now, just so I could go into the game and see what it's all about once I do it. My theory is that there isn't some even better ending to this if I do the genocide run last. I feel like the genocide run just exists for the people who want to experience it, but if you want to have the perfect world that you created, you should just not do it because that's the whole point of this game is to just not kill anyone and the message that it tries to spread. So if you show off the genocide run just for the sake of showing it off, then it's probably going to make you feel bad for it. I don't expect this to be a good ending. I will be shocked if it does have a better ending than the pacifist ending, but I'm definitely not expecting that to be the case. I'm expecting this to make me feel bad for doing the things that I'm about to do and uh, it will probably encourage me to play the game again and have another pacifist ending just so I can feel better about myself and just keep on playing the game forever and ever. But regardless, I'm going to go ahead and do it because I want to experience everything about this game that it, there is to offer. And I know I said that I was going to maybe come back to this in a year or something, but I honestly cannot wait long, that long. I am so in love with this game. It completely won me over and I want to experience it right now. So against bitter judgment, we are going to reset the entire universe. You're just hoping we get at least something out of this. So then, what are we going to name the fallen human? We know the human's name now, we know their name is Frisk. However, I'm aware that naming the character Frisk might interfere with the genocide run, if you know what I'm saying. If you don't know what I'm saying, then I'll just leave you in the dark for a bit, but I'll show that off as a bonus video after the genocide run. So. There's the neutral run, the genocide run, the pacifist run, and then the name your human frisk run, which I'll explain later, but that one's super short at the very least. So we're just going to name the character what I named them before, and that is the most creative name of all time. If I could find the letters, Humana. Why can't it be Hugh Woman or Hugh They? Is this correct? Looks as menacing as always. Let's go. Human. Here we are. Starting us back at the beginning. I'm interested to see what Flowey is going to say. He's here. Howdy! I'm Flowey! Flowey the flower! Hmm. You're new to the underground, aren't ya? Golly, you must be confused. Someone ought to teach you how to things work around here. So, he really did reset. I wonder if that would have changed if I had, uh, not used hard mode right off the bat? I don't know. This little meal will have to do. Ready? Here we go! So, I know what your tricks are this time, so I wonder if I could actually dodge the pellets. Your soul starts off, yeah, I know how the game works. You don't need to explain to me. I'm gonna try to avoid uh, some commentary this time around, so, or not commentary, I'm gonna, like, skip through dialogue that isn't necessary. Little white friendliness palettes. Are you ready? Move around, get as many of them as you can. And I just dodge all of them. Look at his face. Hey, buddy, you missed them. I can't even remember what voice I gave him. Let's try again, okay? I'm just, like, I switch between voices with him every five seconds, because he's, like, pure evil. I knew Floyd was evil, uh, before the start of the game, but... Is that a joke? Are you brain dead? Run! Into the bullets! I mean, friend of this pellets! He's so evil. You know what's going on here, don't you? You just wanted to see me suffer! Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Die! He's so evil. Oh, no. Uh, I don't remember this happened last time. And we are saved. Fire magic. And here comes Toriel. What a terrible creature torturing such a poor innocent youth. Ah, uh, do not be afraid, my child. I am Toriel, caretaker of the ruins. I pass through the place every day to see if anyone has fallen down here. You are the first human to come here in a long time. Come, I will guide you through the catacombs. This way. Okay, off she goes. And in I go. And so far, so good, I think. No HP's full restored. I'll refrain from saving just for the time being. Uh, seems like it's all the same stuff. Well, 
The ruins are full of puzzles, uh, uh, ancient fusions between divergence and door keys. Okay, why don't I hit those? She doesn't even care? I thought like stepping on this would be like some sort of horrible catastrophe or something. Uh, let's see, she labeled which ones we need to flip. The signs are all the same. I guess we haven't technically started the genocide run yet, so, ooh! Uh, can I not hit it? First switch is over on the wall. Uh, it doesn't look like we could skip it. Hit that. Go over here. And now is finally time to see what happens when I press the forbidden switch! I wonder what happens. No, no, no! You want to press the other switch? I even labeled it for you. Uh, what happens if I, like, keep on pressing this one? She won't even let me. I thought that was gonna be, like, some sort of horrible thing that would happen, like, it would murder me right off the bat or something. Fine, just hit that. Splendid, I'm proud of you, little one. Let us move to the next room. Now what happens if I hit it? This switch doesn't even work. Well, that's lame. I thought it was gonna be, like, some epic payoff if I, like, discovered that. Ow, this thing I know. Well, that's lame. As a human living in the underground, monsters may attack you. You will need to be prepared for this situation. However, worry not. The process is simple. You encounter monsters under a fight. While you're in the fight, strike up a friendly conversation. Yeah, we're not doing that this time around, Toriel. Sorry to break it to you. I feel so weird commenting for this because, like, I don't want to do the genocide run. Like, naturally, I wouldn't want to do a genocide run. So, I don't want to act like I'm enjoying what I'm doing because I feel bad. Well, I got right down the middle and killed in one hit. You're in zero experience and zero gold. The run has begun. Ah, oh, the dummies are not for fighting, they are for talking. We do not want to hurt anybody, do we? Come now. Doesn't seem to catch on that we're, we have a murder streak quite yet. But we're just gonna keep on following her, I suppose. And there you go. So here's the thing about Genocide Run. It's not only killing every single boss that we come across. It's not just about killing some random enemies. The random encounters actually have a limit. If you keep on killing the random enemies, they'll eventually disappear. So you have to not only kill every boss, every main character, you have to kill every minor enemy in the game. And it actually keeps track of it, which is crazy. So, as soon as you kill an enemy, you have activated the genocide run, or the possibility to do the genocide run at least. And I believe what I read is that if we save in a saving star now, it will tell you how many more enemies are in a specific area. The areas are determined by the border, I guess you could call it, on the uh, sides of the screen. The purple background means that we're on the ruins right now, so uh, we need to kill all the enemies in the ruins. You don't actually need to go to every single screen to fight enemies. You could stay in the same area continuously if you want to, but... Um, it's recommended that you do stay on one screen because if you go too far advancing, then it will progress the story and it won't, it'll actually deactivate the possibility to have the genocide ending. So, you're gonna wanna stay on one screen, which I know I haven't been doing, you're gonna wanna stay on one screen over and over and over until, uh, the enemies stop appearing. Now, I know that sounds really jerkish because the random encounter rate is actually kinda low in general, so how will you know when you're done? Uh, it actually, uh, okay, you have to walk to the right a little bit. Uh, it actually keeps track of it for you, and it will tell you when you're done in a certain area. Hopefully, I'll be able to show it off instead of just telling you about it. But, right here is when, uh, we're supposed to be done. Uh, when you save right here. Playfully crinkling through the leaves, at least before it restored. Save the game. Uh, leaf pile doesn't tell you. I was told that, like, it would tell you how many more enemies you need to kill in an area. Uh, maybe when I kill one more? Here, this guy. Uh, our weapon's not that good, so need to just dodge these guys, hit this. At least I'm a seasoned veteran in fighting and dodging now, so hopefully it'll be sort of easy. Uh, it's gonna tell me now. It doesn't tell me how many more enemies, so I just sort of have to keep on doing it until they disappear, which sounds really boring and kind of it's just unsettling that I don't know when, when I'm done. I thought it would tell me when I'm done. So I guess I'll just keep on fighting until they tell me not to, meow. Uh, I apologize if that sounds super boring, but I'm going to be trying to cut this down as much as possible because I want this LP to be fun and enjoyable and just uh, not too repetitive. So I'm going to cut away and, and come back when they tell me that I'm done fighting enemies in the ruins, okay? See you guys in hopefully just a moment. And by the way, before anyone tells me, yes, I'm aware that dodging the credits during the true pacifist ending unlocks something. I will go back and do that if I can. If I could do that again during the genocide run credits, then I will do so. 
But if I need to play the pacifist run again, then I'll gladly do so because this game is short and easy and I love this game. So I will show that off eventually, but I was unfortunately not able to do it uh, right now like I would have hoped. It was just way too sing and difficult, so I'll save that for a later time. Now the enemies are appearing a lot less frequently, and I like how as soon as I say that, someone appears. And something else that I noticed is that before I was just fighting only froggets, but then the minsoons started appearing. I presume that's because I'm running out of froggets to fight, and the minsoons are supposed to only appear later on in this uh, area, but since I'm getting rid of the froggets, it's making minsoon appear. That might just be me being crazy, so it might not entirely be true. Though if it is, that would be kind of a good indication that I'm doing things right, and I'm not just wasting my time here. Interesting. I finally got a random encounter, but this is what I was greeted with. It tells you that there's no one left to fight. Once you do that, determination. That's all it says. It doesn't give you any cheery messages anymore because they know that you're not going for a cheery playthrough. So, we have officially activated the genocide run. It says take one, take one piece of candy, sure. Well this time I, since I'm trying to be completely evil, how disgusting. I'll go ahead and take another one. How many can I take? I just stock up my entire inventory. I feel like the scum of the earth. Then take one, take a candy. You took too much, too fast, the candy spills onto the floor. And look at what you've done. And now it's just fallen. Uh, does that mean I like have all of them? No I do not. Okay, so I guess I can only take four. That's kind of funny, like, I just can't pick them up anymore. So, we've officially activated the genocide run. It's not going to give us any more cheery messages whenever we save. It just says determination, and we still get random encounters, which is interesting. I don't know why that happens. Maybe we just written the game's code to have us uh, give us a random encounter every time we walk, but this is how they just tell you that you're good to go. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Maybe it's just trying to make me feel terrible, and it's sort of working, but we're just going to keep on going. I don't know why I messed up on that puzzle, but yeah. This is how it works. I looked it up to see how many enemies were in the area. Let's well, Toriel for no reason in particular. Which do you prefer, cinnamon or butterscotch? Let's say butterscotch this time. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. Click. And then she rings again. This Toriel, you don't dislike cinnamon, do you? I know what your preference is, but would you turn your nose if you turn up your nose if you found that on your plate? Right, right. I understand. Thank you for being patient, by the way. Uh, push, not push the rock. Apparently, they just really want to make you feel terrible. Uh, does this sign say anything different? There goes four gray rocks, three out of four, okay. So, I'm hoping this is gonna be short. I feel like there's gonna be some sort of twist to it. Like, if all the characters dis disappear, is it just, like, gonna be a commentaryless game? There's gonna be some sort of deep message hidden within it that... Oh, uh, I remember this room. Let's see if I could actually do it on the first try. I sort of vaguely remember it in my mind to go down here and here. Or not that far, I guess. Yeah, you do it like that. Uh, I'll just never get used to this puzzle. I don't want this LP to be too repetitive. I know I've said that so many times, so it makes that repetitive in its own way, but... Uh, we've officially activated the genocide run, which is an interesting feeling to me. I don't know what's going to happen, and I'm excited to find out what, as well as why people wanted to save this one for last. Um, I don't know if it's just for like consistency's sake, if like stuff won't make canonically sense if I do the genocide run first. Uh, but maybe it will, I'm not entirely sure. Let me go over here, and then he goes on back. And like he just pushed me. That's sort of like a speedrunning tactic. It pushed me ahead during the cutscene. Determination. That's all it has to say. I've never found the mousey. How sad. She's been quite need some time stuck to the table. Uh. Interesting. What? I was expecting to kill you but you've run away. Leave 7 in the web, sure. Uh, gave us a donut. And gave us a jug. I hope that giving money to the spider bake sale doesn't cause the genocide run to end. Like, you're too nice to the neighborhood spider kids. You're uh, gonna lose the genocide run. I know that you could deactivate the genocide run if you uh, leave an area without killing enemies, so 
if you had like gone too far even if you go back and backtrack it won't count once you deactivate the genocide run then like you're back to the neutral run you can't fix it without resetting your playthrough or whatever or going back to a previous save so it's very recommended that you stay in a specific screen once you find enemies here just keep on fighting them until it says you're done uh there's just one switch i remember we found ghosty appears down here as well right uh there's nothing here oh yeah there were also like carrots of doom before but they're not appearing like anymore found some faded ribbon i guess we'll equip that and the weapons actually matter this time around since I'm actually going to be using them, so that's cool. Uh, nothing in here. Uh, nothing in any of these. Like, I forgot about the carrot enemies that, like, you could eat, but they just disappear in general, I guess? I don't know, just, like, I feel there's some sort of consistency with enemies, but sort of not. Like, the fact that there are supposed to be enemies down there, but I don't find them. And the thing with the ghosty, I feel like that's going to be the, our first thing that we're going to experience. When we get to that ghost house, something's going to change. I uh, can only imagine. I guess they got to have some characters alive for us to find out about and have them tell us how horrible of a person we are. Uh, that doesn't do anything if I remember correctly. I like that it keeps on popping up just reassuring me that I'm doing the right thing. At least, but... Uh, I think it was back here. Uh, I'm supposed to hit the switch. Switch, press it. You hear clicking sound. Cool, I remember things, sort of. But then isn't, like, go through here. And, god darn it. Uh, nothing down here for us. Then we gotta walk all the way back around. Isn't it, if, like, we press the blue switch once we enter the third room, then something happens? Uh, I guess not. Go back around, back around, back around. This entire LP is just gonna be me trying to rediscover all these puzzles. Excuse me, go through here. Go back down. Uh, run into another enemy. Nobody came. Uh, clicking sound. I guess I shouldn't feel too annoyed at the fact that it keeps having those things pop up because it just takes a second to get out of and that's sort of the point of the genocide ruse just make you feel like garbage for your decisions. So, like I said, I'm not expecting this to be a good ending. I think this is just sort of here for the people who want it to exist. Just for the sake of discovering it. It's probably going to be very terrible and I just realized the frogs aren't here. The ones that I explained to you, you can speed through text and everything, they're gone. We were probably fighting those exact NPCs, but they just disappeared. That's really cool. Oh my god. And also really sad. But, um, let's go ahead and use, uh, equip the toy knife. And we're prepared for our fight with Toriel. I think we're going to end the episode off once we finish the ruins. Uh, just go up here. Oh dear, that took longer than I thought it would. I wonder if she'll say anything about the fact that I killed everyone. Uh... We never find out what that phone call is about, do we? How'd you get here, my child? Are you hurt? Not a scratch. Impressive, but still. I should not have left you alone for so long. It was irresponsible of me to surprise you like this. Uh, let's see. Nothing else here. Because I don't have to read all the dialogue. I feel like that message just determination that's a good indicator of whether or not i'm still in the genocide run uh surprise it's a butterscotch cinnamon pie i thought we might celebrate your arrival uh, i just want to like slowly go through the dialogue just to make sure that i don't accidentally skip stuff that i don't know about yeah rub my head i'm about to murder you later so i can't feel good about it make myself at home i guess i will And there's a pie left for me, how sweet. Too bad I have to murder you later. Carrying too much, god darn it. Oh, we can't carry stuff. Uh, we'll probably come back later then. Empty photo frame, it's really dusty. Box of kids shoes. I don't know, is there any, is the dialogue different? Uh, I don't think so. It's me, human, okay. It's me, human, it's me, human. That changed a little bit, because before it just said, it's you, and then at the end it said, despite everything, it's still you, and then it said, it's still you, Frisk, and now it says, it's me, human. Interesting. That mirror, I don't know, like, why they put so much e emphasis on it, just interesting how that changes over time. Books are all the same. I think Toriel's gone now, I believe. Uh, no, she's here. Already? Uh, let's see, just tell her right off the bat that I want to go home. When can I go home? What? This this is your home now. 
Um, would you like to hear about the book I'm reading? It's called 72 Uses for Snails. How to exit the ruins. Um, how about an exiting snail fact? Or an exciting snail fact. Did you know that snails talk? Really? Slowly? Just kidding. Snails don't talk. Interesting. Uh, how to exit the ruins. I have to do something. Stay here. And we're ready to go. I don't know why the flashing thing still happens. I don't know if you see it on screen, but like whenever I examine something, it's only in the ruins I've noticed. Whenever I examine something, the background like changes like somewhat lighter color and then it goes back to regular color. I don't think it appears on a recording though, so probably pointless for me to be mentioning it, but it's time for us to kill Toriel. Uh, for real this time, I won't have to feel bad about this one because this is the run I'm going for. Hooray! So, you wish to know how to return home, do you not? Ahead of lies the end of the ruins. Exit, I'm going to destroy it. Just gonna keep on following you. Every human that falls down here meets the same fate. I have to- I've seen it again and again. They come, they leave, they die. You naive child, if you leave the ruins, they, Asgore, will kill you. Only protecting you, do you understand? Go to your room. Gonna keep on going. Do not try to stop me, this is your final warning. Hopefully I win the fight. That'd be kind of awkward if I just lost. You wanna leave so badly? <laughs> you are just like the others. There is only one solution to this. Prove yourself. Prove to me you are strong enough to survive. So as we've learned before, we don't actually need to use the fight command during any fight during the pacifist run. However- JESUS CHRIST, WHAT?! How did that- what?! You, you really hate me that much? Now, I see who I was protecting by keeping you here. Not you, but them. Why does she look like that? <sighs> There's no turning back now. I want to go get my cake, but I just want to talk about something. Okay, I was not expecting it to go like that. I assume that only works if you killed all the other enemies before because they want to make you feel like garbage. Like even more so than when I felt when I killed her the first time. That was an experience! I want to sell these things because I need to buy weapons later. Should I hold on to them? Because we can't come back into this room later. I'll get rid of the monster candy. Even monster candy, just 10 HP. Not, not great. Take the pie with us, even though I like never use the pie, I always save it for the end. That's interesting. But she says them. Does that mean we're somebody else and we're gonna discover that? That we aren't the same human, we're not Frisk anymore? Cause that would be interesting. That would be a good way of keeping us from naming ourselves Frisk during the genocide run, because like I was told before, if you name yourself Frisk. Uh, some things get changed in a different way, so I recommend not doing a genocide run and having your character named Frisk. So what lies beyond this door now? I'm really interested. I was not expecting that. It was a lot longer of a pathway than I remember it being. Here you are. You weren't here in the pacifist run, because you had nothing else to say to us. But now you see what we're after this time. <laughs> You're not really human, are you? That has a couple of different meanings now. No, you're empty inside, just like me. In fact, you're human, right? We're still inseparable after all these years. Listen, I have a plan to become all-powerful, even more powerful than you and your stolen soul. Let's destroy everything in this wretched world. Everyone, everything in these worthless memories. Let's turn them all to dust!
it begins. Next time on Undertale, we're going to begin our third visit through Snowden. And we're going to be painting the snow red. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night. <laughs> I don't want to kill Papyrus.